Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I don't think we can get past uh, something that like happened this weekend uh, without saying anything about it. And man, I, I just, I wanna desperately implore the church to understand the season and the times that we are in. We cannot afford to continue on as things as, the, as they always were. We cannot, we are, we are in, this is a fight. We are in a fight. And this is not just us praying. This is us putting our hand to something that, that involves our nation. Are you listening to me? And I'm talking to the young people too. Listen to me. We have got to rise up and do some things that, that require effort. We cannot sit on the sidelines. We cannot do it. We cannot afford this. We have seen this in other nations. We saw this in Germany when Hitler made his rise. It, it, he was popular until he wasn't. Are you hearing me? We've got to do something. And we got to pay attention to what, what the parties are doing. What are, they, what are they doing? Both sides of the aisle, what are they standing for? Because if they're not standing for one nation under God, they need to go. I don't care which side of the aisle they're on. They need to go. <clears throat> we have too many puppets. Too many bought and paid for politicians. And I'm telling you, we can pray them out and we can vote them out. And if you're in this place and you are not voting, God help you. That is totally godless. Can I just be clear? That is godless for you to not vote. You are abdicating your right and privilege as American to not stand in and, and voice your opinion and what's being said. And you are abdicating... For the, for the other side of whatever that is to bring evil and wickedness in. You have to vote biblical values, not your values. I used to say you have to vote your values. I don't say that anymore because people's values are all screwed up. Vote Bible values. Are you hearing me? Let me tell you what Bible values are. Christians, if you're a believer in Jesus and you love God and you believe in the word of God, you believe in life from conception all the way to death at old age and everywhere in between. Conception, you know what I mean by that? Is everybody clear on conception? When the egg and the sperm meet, that's life. We value that all the way to the end. As a Christian, that's where we stand. That is Bible, that is founded. If you don't believe that, you have to change. That's as clear as I can say that. When Jesus did the communion, he said, this is my body, right? Given for you. We take communion based on that phrase, the body and the blood of Jesus. What is the mantra of the left when it comes to abortion? What do they say? My body. body. The devil stole Jesus giving of his body and twisted it to say my body. Are you guys following me what the enemy does? Yes. It's, it's godless. That's such a big one. This is what we believe. We believe in, in life. We believe that God should be in politics. I don't care what you were taught in your cheap civics class in high school. Separation of church and state is 100% provable of what it was intended. They wanted the the government out of the church, not the other way around. They invoked God in everything they did in the beginning. They prayed in Congress to the one and only living God and Jesus Christ, his son. We have record of it. Now they pray to the God Brahma and some weird, just goofy stuff. The world's messed up. Separation of church and state was to keep politics out of the church to keep the government from ruling in the church not to keep us talking about politics but to keep the government from telling us how to worship that's what they left in england they could only worship one church that was it everybody else they're like we don't want to worship your church it's godless 
We're leaving. We're going to worship God the way we want to and establish a nation. I'm fired up this morning. I'm chilling. <laughs> I'm ticked off the enemy tried to take out President Trump. I'm ticked off. I don't care who you are. If you celebrate the assassination of a leader, you are wrong. That's not how we roll. And the enemy's used a labeling of President Trump as Hitler and Stalin. It's all work of the enemy to get people to see him wrongly so that they can justify evil. There are people online upset that he didn't die yesterday, lamenting it. It's wicked. Can you guys, can you guys please do me a favor and stop watching mainstream media? It is godless. China is now taking notes on how we do media so that they can manipulate their people. That's what they do in China. It's the communist party. They only give the people the information they want them to know so that they become drones and pawns and do exactly what they're told. That's what they get. So now what do we have? We have Chinese nationals in America going, telling Americans, why are you watching this garbage? We've seen this in China. We don't watch this at all. None of it's true. I'm ticked off. <laughs> Trump almost gets murdered yesterday, assassinated. And more, more details are gonna come out about that, but the short version is like, how the heck did that happen? <sighs> CNN, Trump's speech interrupted by Secret Service. That's their headline. Trump escorted away after loud noises at P P Pennsylvania rally. CNN, Secret Service rushes Trump off stage after he falls at rally. These are the headlines from mainstream media. Anybody that saw it goes, shots fired. Don't trust them at all. Donald Trump escorted off the stage by Secret Service during rally after loud noises ring in the crowd. They lie. They lie, they lie, they lie. Every one of them are bought and paid for. You cannot trust any of them. There are way better news sources everywhere else. Please go find them. Because otherwise you're just, you're listening to lies. And it's really hard to discern the truth when you're getting deceived over and over and over. Stop it. There's good sources out there. Makes me mad. But we have got to wake up. If we're being buffaloed and fooled by this garbage, we will not see clearly. There are, there are just tens of millions of people that want President Trump dead in our country. And I just don't understand it. Why? I understand you don't want him in office, but dead? That's wicked. <sighs> we have got to be willing to say some things as Christians into culture. We have to. And you know what? It's risky. You could lose things. It's possible you could lose friends and relationships. But by golly, 200 years ago, people in our country took up arms and died so that we could sit in church today. Yes. We're not to that place. We don't have to take up arms. We're, people, well, I'm asking you to like stand for truth on social media and in front of your friends and in the break room and, and call people. That's not true. That's not right. What you're saying is a lie. People hate being called a liar, but if you're lying, you're a liar. My goodness, we've got to wake up. When I heard that, I, I, was, I wasn't watching the news. Somebody called me, did you, hear, did you hear the news? President Trump got shot. I'm like, well, I need more information because that's not enough. <laughs> and the next one was it, got, it grazed his ear, but he's safe. I was, you, you should have led with that. That would have been great. <laughs> and then without knowing anything else, I mean, I just started to thank God. Anyway, we're in an election year. Do you guys know that? I told you at the beginning of the year, it's gonna get wild and crazy. This is not the end. Pray for President Trump. Pray for the political leaders. We don't believe in assassinations in this country. That's wicked and it's evil. 
And the last couple that we've seen that, we, that are, are the most well-known, the Lincoln and Kennedy assassinations, the most well-known of our presidents, those guys were about to expose truth. They were speaking truth to power and power took them out. Imagine that. Do you understand that evil knows no bounds when it's about to be exposed? Pray. Amen. We're in a series on prayer for crying out loud. Let's put it to practice and stop just sitting here and getting a good little lecture and then going home and forgetting all about it. You and I both have stuff to do every week. All of us are busy, but prayer cannot fall off the list. Amen. That being said, we're gonna, we have corporate prayer on Tuesday nights every week, 5.30 to 6.30. Show up. I'm, you don't have to show up all the time, but show up. Let's pray. Come on. We, we pray over our country. We pray over our leaders. We pray over our church. We pray over Israel. We pray truth into the, into the life and world that we live in. That's what we do. We pray over you guys. Church members of Westside, this is what we do. We pray. It's important that we make it a priority. Amen. Amen. (sighs) Okay. I'm going to say more about this in the weeks to come because things need to be said. Truth needs to be spoken. But we cannot afford to, to just keep cruising along without speaking truth in love into darkness. We are the salt and the light. We are. That's us. And if we don't salt and bring light, man, they're not going to get flavored. I mean, anyway, we got to keep going. We got to keep doing it. Amen. Turn to John chapter 17. The practice of prayer. Jesus praying for us. This is important. This is important that we know who we are. We have authority and we have power in the earth. This is not all up to God. We are not Christians that believe that everything that happens is up to God. That is apathy and spiritual laziness. There wasn't one amen on that. Believing everything is up to God is apathy and spiritual laziness. We have got to do something about this. Amen. Truly, revival is the answer to the woes. That's it. Jesus is the answer. We know this. But a lot of times these doors are opened by us calling out darkness, calling out deception, calling out the lie. It's necessary for Christians to do this. Amen. Amen. Last week we saw in verse 12 and 13 that Jesus had kept his disciples. And we saw what that looked like, that Jesus had authority to protect and guard the people that God had called to him to help. And that God does the same for us. There is a keeping that God does for us as we follow him. Stay close to Jesus, amen? Amen. And there's a joy that is coupled together with faith that we can be fulfilled in the joy of Jesus. We can have the joy of Jesus. You know, Jesus was full of joy even leading to the cross and the, and, the, and the hardness of that, Jesus forsook the shame and embraced what was coming for the joy that was set before him. Come on, that takes a, 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 a gumption. Come on, some fortitude on the inside to, to know trouble is coming and go, we got this, I'm, I'm making it because God's with me. That's the fortitude we need standing in this hour to say what needs to be said and do what needs to be done. God is with me. And it doesn't matter what comes and it doesn't matter the ramifications. I will do what's right if it costs me everything. 55 of the 56 signers died early because of what they declared on the Declaration of Independence. They lost wives and children and houses and fortunes and they pledged them. Our lives, our sacred honor, and our fortunes, we pledge for this cause. We got it so good. Are you kidding me? You lose a few friends on Facebook? Just kick yourself right in the butt as you roll on down the road. Big whoop. So what, you got to get another job. Most of you won't face that. Some of you might. 
Do the right thing. So we're jumping into we're jumping into 14. And this tells us a lot of where we're at. Jesus in this section from 6 through 19, he is praying for his disciples. He's specifically praying for the disciples that he's with right there, but these prayers transcend. They move into discipleship of us. We are his disciples. We are, if we're followers of Jesus and we're followers of the word, we are his disciples. That means these prayers are prayed over us too. Verse 14, John 17, 14. I have given them your word. This is Jesus, red letters. He's praying to the father. He says, father, I have given them your word and the world has hated them because they are not of the world just as I am not of the the world. If we look like Jesus and we talk like Jesus and we act like Jesus and we smell like Jesus and we walk like Jesus, you're going to be hated. Tough luck. You're going to be hated. It's already in here. Why are we surprised? Not everybody. I mean, the people in this room Do not hate you. That's why we get together. (laughs) It's it's why we have church. So you can rub shoulders with people that have your best interests at heart as well. Do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together as is the manner of some. Out there, when you act like Jesus and you bring life and light and salt into the world, they hate that and they hate you for it. They hate the church. They hate the the things of God because light exposes darkness. We know that the, that the, the properties of salt are healing. If you rinse your mouth when you, when you have uh, uh, problems in your mouth and you rinse it with a good salt, it, it doesn't feel good, but it, it does good things for your mouth. You could put salt on a wound and it hurts like crazy but it also helps to heal and, 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 and neutralize things. Salt is good for us, but the world hates it when they're exposed. So don't be shocked by that. Jesus said, I gave them your word and the world, and the world hates them for it. Why? Because the word is life and it's truth. That's what's in you. If, if somebody doesn't hate you right now in the world, I have to ask, are you doing it right? <laughs> if you don't have any haters, nobody dislikes you for your stance, for what you believe. Nobody. Are we doing it right? Nobody? Well, well pastor, the Bible says... Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are the peaceful. Yeah. (laughs) There's a balance here. Oh, ye taking the word out of context. (laughs) As much as is possible with you, be at peace with all men. That doesn't mean you can and shelve your beliefs and your morals and your values to make peace as much as is possible with you, you stand for what's right. And if they don't want to, tough luck. This is what's right. <clears throat> we can be at peace if you can agree on truth, but if we can't, we're at odds because I ain't changing and I ain't putting it on the shelf in the dark. Hide it under a bushel, no. Come on, let this light so shine before men that they see Jesus. That means somebody's gonna dislike you because they don't like you telling them or saying at all. It's just saying in general what they're doing is wrong. It's wrong to mutilate children to change their gender. It's wrong. It's wicked. It's wrong to call a boy a girl and a girl a boy. It's wrong. It's not a difference of opinion. It's wicked. It's wrong to take the life of children in the room. It's in the womb. It's wrong. It's wrong to euthanize our elderly. It's wrong. 
It's wrong to assassinate a political leader. It's wrong. There are clear, absolute truths in this that we can stand for what is right. And you can take the moral high ground. Not high horse, high ground. High horse looks down on everybody. High ground tries to pull people up. The world has hated them because they're not of this world, just as I am not of this world. Do you understand? You are not from this place anymore when you're a believer. I was born in Seattle, but that's not my home anymore. I live here in Spokane and Cheney. That's, this is not my home. This is a temporary residence where I have an assignment from God to do his will and walk in his ways. Temporary. Are you hearing me? Stop worrying so much about the stuff. Temporary. All going up in ashes. Come on now. Doesn't mean you can't have nice stuff and take care of it. You should, but come on. If you're so worried about the stuff, you can't stand for what's right. Are we even doing it right? We're not of this place. Jesus told them and showed them, now that you're believers, now that you're disciples of mine, you are not of this world anymore, just like I am not of this world. That phrase, just as, we're in the first verse right here this morning, 14. That phrase, just as, means just as Jesus is. So we take his citizenship. He came from heaven to earth and went back to heaven. We started in earth and got our citizenship in heaven and now we're working in earth, but we're finishing in heaven. That's our home. And just like that's Jesus' home, he says, that's just like it's our home. Ambassadors are are creatures, they're beings, humans that are in another land under the assignment of the country that their home is. And when they're there, they have the full rights and privileges of citizenship just in a foreign country. They have the same protection. They have the same rights, the same privileges, the same authority. Come on, they're ambassadors from where they came from. You and I are ambassadors for heaven. Let's represent him well. Thank you, Lord. John 16, 33 says, these things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. In the world you're gonna have tribulation. If our whole, if our whole modus operandi, so the military military folks know that, if our whole life is is to avoid tribulation and problems, we're not doing it right. Our our mission should say, God, what do you want me to do? What battle do you want me to fight? What, where, what fray do you want me to walk into to bring light and truth? Because you're going to have tribulation in the earth. It's going to happen. And you'll have it whether you look for it or not. But come on, we are done standing on the sidelines. We need to seek out what God is telling us to go after. You're, it's going to happen. Stop trying to stop trying to dodge it. Stop trying to make everybody happy. Stop trying to, to keep the status quo. Stop it. It's exhausting for you and everyone else around you. Just do what's right. Hmm. I'm not frustrated at you. Do you understand that? Sometimes my kids are like, why are you upset with us? I'm not, I'm just talking emphatically because I'm upset. (laughs) Ephesians 5, 7 through 15 in the New American Standard. It'll be on the screen. I'm gonna read it in, in this version. It says this, therefore do not be partakers with them. With who? With the world. Don't be partakers with sinners in the world. Don't, don't jump into what they're doing. For you were formerly darkness 
but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. For the fruit of light consists in all goodness and righteousness and truth. The fruit of light consists in all goodness and righteousness and truth. That means if you're walking in truth and light and righteousness, that's the fruit of God living in you. But if you never proclaim it and say it and do it, you're not walking in it. And you look just like the world. And the world has got to be able to tell who's different. Has to. Trying to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Come on, we're trying to learn. Lord, show us what's pleasing in your sight. Do not participate in the unfruitful deeds of darkness, but instead even expose them or reveal them. For it is disgraceful even to speak of the things which are done by them in secret. But all things become visible when they are exposed by the light. For everything that becomes visible is light. For this reason, it says, awake sleeper and arise from the dead and Christ will shine on you. That is a word to the church today. Awake sleeper. Rise from the dead and Christ will shine on you. You want to see Christ shine in your life? Wake up. Wake up. Not woke. Awake. Open your eyes. Look at headlines of what's being shoved down your throat that's garbage, that's lies and deception and over and over and over. These people are bought and paid for by the devil. And they do not care about our country. They care about their way. They want their immoral ways not exposed by the truth of the word of God. And they wanna live their lives in sin and debauchery and darkness. And they do not want their deeds exposed by the light. So any leader, Christian or secular or political that would bring to light uh, misdeeds, crimes, immorality will be absolutely under fire. So the only thing you can trust from the world coming out of the media is if they say something, believe the opposite. If they say someone's bad, we probably need to look at how good they are. We need to find out why they're a target. That's how we are operating now. What did you say? Oh, you don't like the Speaker of the House? Let's find out why we like him. I'm, I'm just telling you. Did, you. did you notice after the assassination yesterday? I didn't see one. And I looked. I didn't see one call for uh, taking firearms away. No, not when they served the purpose. Second Amendment better stay in, the con- stay in the Constitution and part of the Bill of Rights. It better stay in there as an amendment of Bill of Rights. It better. Listen to me, Americans. It better. Those first two are paramount. Freedom of speech, Second Amendment. Can't have the rest without them. We don't have a gun problem. We got a God problem. That's the deal. I keep getting sidetracked, but by golly. (laughs) Awake sleeper, arise from the dead. Christ will shine on you. If you stay asleep and you don't recognize you're alive to God, the light of God will not shine. He's meant to shine through us. That means we're going to have to stand for what's right. That could be all kinds of things. It could be signage, it could be t-shirts you wear, it could be posts you make, it it could be the rallies you attend, it could be the the political things you stand for. Come on, we're in an election year where where our state, our county needs people to show up. The left, and I say the left, and I'm very clear, the left is wicked, evil, awful. They, They desire the mutilation of children, the murder of children in the womb, euthanasia from for a senior adults, anybody that gets in their way, they, they wanna have sex with any and everyone they want without anybody telling them no, including minors and same sex. And eventually, I'm not even kidding you, animals. And that is coming. Yes. And they don't wanna be told no on that. So they are setting the, places in pe- the pieces in place so they can have anything they want. And if we don't stand in their way, they will get it. 
So we've got to, we've got to stand up. There's, there's boots on the ground that, that require people to go door to door and, and tell people what's going on because if all they're watching is CNN, you know what they're getting. Spoon-fed trash. Arise, awake sleeper, rise from the dead. Christ will shine on you. Do you want Christ to shine on you? I do. But if we're asleep and we're not walking in the life God gave us, it ain't happening, sorry. Too many Christians. There's no light shining on them. They're literally singing this little light of mine. It ain't little. He wants to shine bright. Be careful how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise, making the most of your time for the days are evil. 2,000 years ago, Jesus said that. Sorry, Paul, it was Ephesians. 2,000 years ago, he said, the days are evil. Guess what? John chapter three, verse 18, it says this. He who believes in him is not condemned. If you believe in Jesus, you're not condemned. I don't care who says what about you. They can call you a bigot, a racist, a Christian nationalist. They can call you all kinds of stuff. Doesn't matter. You're not condemned by the only one that matters. You believe in Jesus, you're not condemned. But he who does not believe is condemned already because he's not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. And this is the condemnation that light has come into the world and men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. That's why they love darkness. That's why they want wickedness. That's why they want certain leaders in charge that will keep a border wall open and allow terrorists into our country to rape children. And if you say that's not happening, you're watching CNN. It's happening in every state. It's an epidemic and the sheriff's departments are freaking out over it because it's not in the media. They're hiding it. It's wicked and evil. Pay attention to where your kids are, church. We live in an evil day. It's not the same 20 years ago when we could ride our bike, 20, 30 years ago. How old am I? 40 years ago. It's not the same when I could ride my bike all day long and not be home till dinner. It's not the same. I wasn't going to say 70, but somebody did. It's not the same. They don't want their deeds exposed. Darkness does not want its deeds exposed. We bring light. They hate that and they hate you for it. Why? It's the enemy. He's full of hate. He's full of evil. That's what the enemy does. But that should not bother us at all. You should go home and have a little dance party when somebody says they hate you. Yes, I'm winning. I'm I'm proving scripture right. And listen to me, they gotta hate you for the right reasons. Not because you're acting like a jerk, but because the light of the gospel is shining through you and you're exposing darkness with truth. For everyone practices, practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in God. Amen. We are called to awake, to rise from the dead. Let Christ shine on us. More paramount than ever. I'm encouraging you to look at your calendar, to look at your schedule. We're in a fight in our country. It requires all of us. Washington is at the very top of the list for the most fraud in voting of any state in the country. And I'm not even joking. At the top of the list. Our voter rolls are filthy dirty. Filthy. Dead people, incarcerated people, people out of state, people that don't exist, people, you know, 100 people at the same address. There are voter rolls are dirty. And the only way to fix that is for citizens to kind of step out and do some things. So if this is pulling on your heart at all, I'm encouraging you to connect with some people because we have, we, have, we have some great groups in our state, in our county working on this right now. 
Matter of fact, we can probably do this, Jared. We could probably put something on our website to where people could go. Like, where do I go? Who do I look up? We could probably put that up there so you know where to go so you could you could do some work. It requires citizenship to stand up for what's right. Right? Who we vote for is not going to save the world. We know that. Jesus is the savior of the world. But if we abdicate this decision, then we're allowing wickedness and evil to rule in our country. And these politicians that are ruling in our country right now are calling, had called for what happened yesterday. A dozen of them quoted as saying, we need to put a bullseye on Trump. Our lead politicians, that's evil. Are you guys okay? I mean, are you just, you gotta be seeing what I'm seeing. You have to be seeing what I'm seeing. We got to stand for what's right. And I'm not saying we agree with everybody on everything. We are not hiring a pastor to run this country. That's not what we're doing. We need somebody that will stand for the constitution and put a wall on the border of our country to keep out wicked and evil people. That is a no brainer. I'm done. I've got so much to say and do. We are, we are not of this world. And Jesus prays, he prays in 15. He said, I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. If getting saved was just getting out of here, then we'd be out of here already. Eternity starts when you get saved, but we're supposed to be in here. And Jesus prayed for us that God would keep us from the evil one keep us from deception, keep us from his plans. The enemy roams about like a roaring lion seeking who he may devour. And God, God wants to protect us from that, but we've got to be in the shelter, in the coverage. We got to get close to him and we got to be doing what's right. We can't just keep going Monday to Friday, the same as it's always been. We've got to make some adjustments. And that is going to require us to look hard and long at who is leading our country. Because who leads our country does affect how we live. Monetarily, spiritually, they are coming for the church. And if they keep getting our way, they will shut the churches down. And if you don't think that's possible, you are living under a rock. Because they did it with COVID and they will do it with something else. Do not be surprised if another pandemic shows up. Do not be scared. They are going to use the same thing again. And they're going to try to scare the pajamas out of anybody that will crawl under the rock. Anybody. Pay attention to what's going on. We have the life of God on the inside of us. Who cares what comes out? Who cares? We've got the life of God in us. If you believe that, and you know, I'm not from this world. Your home, if your home country's heaven, yeah. and you get vaccinated from heaven, what can touch you? Yeah. Come on. Come on. Let me be clear. A vaccination from heaven does not include a needle here. Yeah. Well, I'm stepping on all kinds of stuff today. <laughs> We're in a fight. Come on, you are a soldier. We are at war. We got to do some stuff. We got to step into this wholeheartedly. Be willing to do it. Our forefathers died for us. They died for us so that we could live in freedom. It's our turn to take steps to step into the fray in every possible way, if I can express it. This is us in the boats landing on Iwo Jima. This is us in the boats landing in Normandy. This is us. This is the fight. We're heading onto the beach. We're going to make it to the top. We're going to win this war. We're going to win this battle because God is on our side and there are more with us than there are with them. No doubt about it. But we got to do our job. Shine brightly. There's a world of people that are covered in darkness and they don't see the light and they don't see the truth. And some are willingly there because they don't want their deeds exposed. And and they don't have any desire to come out of it because they like where they're at. But there are millions of others that are just that are just in the dark and don't realize it and wish someone would bring the light to them. Praying for it without even knowing there's a God. And our job is to bring light to them so they can see the truth and see the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. 
Come on. And it won't happen unless you start wearing it with boldness and confidence and courage. Amen? Amen. And my time is up. Okay. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Let me pray. Father, I just thank you for firing us up this morning. At least me, I preached myself fired up. Lord, stir in us that we're at the last hour. Stir in this church a boldness and a confidence of your spirit and your truth and your light to step into the, the life and in, in the, into the world, to step into the, the, the political arena, the spiritual arena, the truth arena, the arena where our work is and where our play is and where our family is. Bring us courage and boldness to speak the truth in love and to bring light to any and all that will hear it. Thank you, Lord. Stir in us. Thank you for protecting and keeping us. As we've seen right here where Jesus preached and prayed that you keep us from the evil one and you protect us. Why? Because we're doing what you called us to do and we are operating in truth and life. Thank you, Lord, for protecting us, guarding us. We will not fear what shall man do to us. Thank you, Father. Bring revival to our country, Lord, through us. We are the revived ones. Thank you, Lord. We step into it. We volunteer. You don't have to draft us. We voluntarily step up and say, here am I, Lord, send me. Thank you for a church full of people, God, that have gumption and guts and courage to do what's right. Thank you, Lord. If you're here this morning and you haven't made Jesus Lord of your life, the beginning of truth in life is to believe the, the one and only truth. The truth that's never been, never be shaken, can never be taken away. The truth that God loves humanity so much, he sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, into the earth to live and to die for our sins in our place. And then God raised him from the dead. It is, an, it is a provable fact. Jesus lived, died, and was risen from the dead. And if you believe that, the Bible says that if you'll believe that in your heart and confess that with your mouth, that Jesus will come into your life and be your Lord and your Savior and lead and guide you all the days of your life. And now, once you make that commitment, once you make that stand, heaven is now your home and you have access to heaven all your life. It's the greatest thing on the planet going. So I wanna invite you this morning, if you haven't prayed that prayer or you're watching online and you haven't made that commitment, you haven't made that declaration, that belief in your heart that Jesus is your Lord and he's your savior and that you believe that he died for your sins and that God raised him from the dead. If you haven't done that, do that today. Do it from your heart. We're gonna pray a prayer, all of us together with those here and those watching online where we confess Jesus is Lord and savior. Just like the Bible says, when you do that, the Bible says you are now a son or a daughter of the living God. You're born again, made brand new. So I'm inviting you. If you're here this morning and you haven't prayed that prayer, pray it with us as we pray. But do this, do this favor for me. Every head's bowed, every eye's closed. Do this favor for me. If you wanna be included in this prayer, you've never done this, or you wanna recommit, you're coming back to the Lord, maybe even a long time, you're coming back to the Lord, you wanna recommit. This is what I'm asking. You're in the seats. I'm asking between you and me and Jesus, I'm asking you, make eye contact with me or just slip your hand up where I can see it. And then we're gonna all pray this prayer together. When you, this isn't something you have to do over and over again. This is something that you do and you commit in your heart and mind to the Lord and it's a done deal. This is a commitment. This is a life change, a lifestyle change. I'm gonna look around. You wanna, you wanna pray? I'm looking. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He's good. Let's pray this prayer together. Can we do that? Pray it with those watching online. Pray it right here. Pray this after me. Father God, Father God I, believe I believe Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. He, is he is your son. He came to this earth. He, to this earth. he died for my sins. Died for my sins. And God, you raised him from the dead. Jesus, I'm asking you, come into my life. Be my Lord and my Savior. Forgive me of all my sins and make me brand new. Fill me with your peace 
with your joy and with the Holy Spirit. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, God did something brand new. Amen. Here at Westside, we're all about equipping believers to succeed in life and mature in Christ as they reach, win, and disciple others. And we want to help serve you in that mission in any way we can. If you made that decision to follow Jesus today, we have some free materials that we want to help jumpstart you in your walk with Christ. Just go to wcspokane.com connect and mark the box that says, I'm committing my life to Jesus. This is the best decision you could ever make, and we want to help you in any way we can. Have a blessed week, and remember, Jesus is coming soon.